Oh, right. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to Monster Monday. My name is DM Galabond, and tonight is Monday, October 19th, 2020. Now, when the party went into the temple, they were bearing the corpse of their dear friend, Fred the Fighter. Now, Fred was a brave soul, and Sister Althea, the senior clergy on staff, gathered Connie the Cleric, Rachel the Rogue, and Wally the Wizard, and said, Friends, what happened? Connie the Cleric, usually cool and calm in crisis, was visibly shaken. Oh, it was horrible, she said. They, 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 they came out of nowhere. Giant bugs. Rachel, a rogue, she was able to dive out of the way in time. But Fred tried to put up his shield. He wasn't quick enough. One of them bit him and then laid its eggs in the wound. Before we knew it, he was convulsing down on the ground, going into the throes of death. And then these larvae started crawling out of him. Oh, it was disgusting. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one thing that can happen to your party should you ever encounter tonight's monster, the Assassin Bug. All right, uh, the Assassin Bug is a creature that plagues the frontier and the wilderness where they seek to hatch their voracious maggots within incapacitated hosts. They resemble giant blue bottle flies. Females usually lighter shade than a male, and they have humanoid type limbs. Now, in this fifth edition rendition, or this fifth edition uh, drawing, uh, which is from the Morden Canaan supplement that came out uh, uh, within the last year or so. Um, it wasn't Morden Canaan's Tome of Foes. It was the additional supplement that came out of that. This drawing really doesn't show kind of the humanoid things, but we do have an image later on um, that will show that back from sort of the original, the origins of the um, of the insect. Um so they're, they appear like flies, except for their limbs, which have the color of human flesh. Uh, and they are human-like in their appendages. Uh, wings are kind of transparent, and uh, they have a little bit of a silverish hue. Okay, now. Normally, I have one page of lore, but there are many pages of lore because this monster is so interesting. Okay, um, the exact origins of the assassin bug are uncertain, but there's rumors. And I love these rumors because these are always things that you can use as a DM to sort of tie in to a campaign or to a plot thread within a campaign, a tangent or something like that. Uh, possibly uh, druids, possibly in service to Talos or Malar, who cultivated the first of these creatures. Remains unknown whether their intent was to create benign means of breaking down monstrous corpses because the flies are the size of people, or whether they had an insidious purpose to rid the wilderness of the growing humanoid population. Um... The assassin bug's unsettling humanoid-like limbs and limited language ability suggest the druids might have engaged in self-sacrifice to achieve this creation. Ooh. So an origin story where 
nature was perverted by those who are sworn to defend nature in order to defend nature. Hmm. Pervert nature in order to defend nature. Yeah, okay. Um, Monster Lore 2. Horrifying egg layers. They attack with a paralyzing bite to incapacitate their prey, and then they lay their eggs in a living host. Um, the assassin bug eggs immediately hatch into maggots that burrow towards the victim's heart, consuming it and killing the host, unless they are quickly destroyed. After gorging themselves on the host's body over several days, the maggots emerge as juvenile assassin bugs ready to continue their horrid life cycle. That's just... Oh, this is a perfect monster if you have a squeamish party. It's a great monster for Halloween, too, um, since Halloween is coming up in a few weeks. So, an unnatural plague. Whole settlements on the frontier have been wiped out by plagues of assassin bugs. And even a single bug can infest and overwhelm an unprepared population without an organized defense. Um, so, when the frontier dukes and counts and barons find out there may be an assassin bug, they might order their soldiers to ride out with flaming brands. And if there's any evidence of an assassin bug in a village, just torch the entire village. Yes, burn all the buildings and all the people with them just to prevent assassin bugs from spreading. Um, and there's lore about wild creatures running headfirst into wildfires um, and then afterwards discovering that those bodies show evidence of a um, assassin bug infestation. So it's like, ugh, ugh, yeah. Okay, and perhaps my favorite of all the monstrous interactions. Few creatures are able to survive the assassin bugs without being treated with magic or fire, but hardy monsters like the catablepus and gorgons have sometimes been observed with deep pockmarks wounds showing where juvenile assassin bugs emerged. And creatures such as hags sometimes cultivate the assassin bugs to use the maggots in their horrid recipes. Think back if you all have ever played the uh, Tomb of Annihilation and the scene where the um, maggots or where the, the hags, uh, the Sown Sisters, I think they call themselves in there, they, um, they take these maggot-like creatures and they have implanted an evil soul into them, and they sew those into the bodies of the PCs so that if the PCs die, the death curse will take the soul of that um, evil thing from that maggot uh, instead of taking the soul of the PC themselves. Uh, so just imagine if what they're actually using are assassin bug uh, larvae. Yeah. Okay, um, and trolls have been known to intentionally allow assassin bugs to invest their bodies, which heal against the wounds of a maggot infestation, just so they can allow those maggots to be pulled out and consumed as a delicacy. Because, of course, trolls would think that assassin bug maggots are a delicacy. Oh, yeah, I cooked this right in my own liver. <laughs> Okay, now, what kind of creature are they? Uh, assassin bugs are, of course, a monstrosity. Uh, monsters in the strictest sense. And they really kind of, according to the 5e monster manual, uh, calling something a monstrosity just means that it really doesn't fit neatly into any other category. Um, so, you know, that's that's kind of where monstrosities go that's sort of the that sort of they will we couldn't figure out where else to put it so we're just going to call it a monstrosity all right now here we go now this you see there's a lot of lore for these assassin bugs but there's not a lot of history because 
they only appear in one place before fifth edition and that's way back in first edition so let's go ahead and move over to the sources shall we and we will see what um we can see this is the fiend folio from ad and d or first edition and this is where the assassin bug originated and as you can see in this illustration it does sort of, sort of have the body of a fly and then four appendages as opposed to six insect legs four appendages with kind of hands and kind of feet um although these feet look more like a bird's feet than a human uh humanoid foot but the hands are kind of humanoid there. Um, and the um, assassin bugs in this edition are considered to be about uh, two feet long. So they're um, giant blue bottle flies with four limbs, miniature arms and legs, rarely seen except during the mating season, one day out of every two months. Two months when a male and female may be encountered flying in search of a host for their offspring. Male always attacks first, and then the female will, and, and the male's bite will paralyze the uh, victim. And the male will keep attacking until it's destroyed. And then the female will lay its eggs or implant its eggs into the victim's body, and the female dies as soon as it lays its eggs. So then the eggs hatch, producing uh, 7 to 12 larvae, and 13 to 24 hours after being implanted. And only very powerful spells like a limited wish or heal will remove or kill the egg. Okay, so now... In 5th edition, at least, you can use fire to get rid of it. But in this edition, it's like, yeah, you have to use a limited wish to get rid of these things. Or a a full heal spell. There's not a cure wounds. That's like a much higher level spell. The full heal. And after two weeks, larvae will leave the host burrowing out through the area which the egg was originally implanted. Causing an additional 5 to 8 hit points of damage per larvae as they do so. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I skipped this one part. When the larvae hatch, each one causes one hit point of damage to the host for every hour as it devours the host's internal organs. <laughs> so that's 24 hit points a day you're losing for every, um, for every larva that's in there. Um, and then here's ways of getting rid of it. Cure serious wounds will kill one larvae per experience level of the caster above six level. Cure criti critical wounds will kill all the larva. Heal will kill all the larva and restore all but five to eight of the victim's hit points. Limited wish uh, can also be effective. And the presumption is that a limited wish will kill everything and heal everything up. Uh and here's a little bit about their um, relationship with trolls. Assassin bugs age are regarded as great delicacies by trolls, troglodytes, and bugbears. Eggs themselves are four to five inches long and oval, colored a deep blue. All right, so, um, yeah. <laughs> this was a horrifying thing when it was, when it was uh, first envisioned. And... I think it's probably even worse in 5th edition. And here, here is the um, sketch of it in, in 5th edition. And this was a stylistic choice. If you, if you get that Morden Kanan supplement, you'll find that every uh, monster in there is sketched kind of like this. Uh, I think the idea is that it's supposed to be some kind of long-lost notebook of Morden Kanan where he where he was sketching the monsters that he encountered on different um, adventures and whatnot. And, um, you know, it has its, uh, it's a medium monstrosity. So now, before they were small, about two feet tall. Now they're medium, which is, you know, the size anywhere from the size of a dwarf on the small scale to like a... Um, to like a fur bulk on the large scale. So anywhere between about four feet and seven feet tall 
is um, what a medium creature is that's a, that has a humanoid morphology. Uh, makes two bite attacks. Uh, the bite attack deals damage and um, the uh, target must succeed on a con save or be paralyzed for a minute. And then the ovipositor, um, there's 1d3 assassin bug eggs which immediately hatch into maggots. And at the start of every turn, the victim takes 1d6 piercing damage per maggot that's, infe that's infesting it. Um, applying fire to the bite wound before the end of the target's next turn deals one fire damage to the target and kills these maggots. After this time, they're too far under the skin to be burned. Um, and when uh, the target infested by assassin bugs ends its turn with zero hit points, it dies as the maggots burrow into its heart and kill it. Um, any effect that cures disease kills all assassin bug maggots infesting the target. So yeah, that's a yeah. This could be like you say, like I said before. This is a really great monster for Halloween. A great thing to throw at your party if they are even the least bit squeamish. Uh, you get a great reaction out of them uh, for uh, doing that. All right, so let's go back to our slides. Okay, now how would you use uh, assassin bugs and counters? Now, assassin bugs in 5e are CR3 monsters, so they're they're on their own. They're not a terrible challenge, but they are oof, they can be devastating um, to uh, commoner NPCs. So if you want to create a hard chat, which is a challenging encounter with these creatures for a party of five PCs by a certain level. Now at level one for five PCs, a single assassin bug is beyond the threshold of being a deadly encounter. So, you know, unless you have really experienced players, you probably don't want to throw an assassin bug at a first level party. But when that party when all those PCs are level two, it changes from beyond deadly to simply a medium encounter. And if you want to make it a hard encounter, you have to throw in something else. Now, uh, a young Kruthik, uh, the Kruthiks are also kind of a, an insect-like monstrosity. So that might be an interesting uh, thing. You might have something going on where there's assassin bugs and Kruthiks in a particular area and you might even have some sort of subplot where there's uh if not an alliance at least they they're not they're not uh hostile towards each other and then when your party gets to level three or four a single assassin bug becomes an easy encounter if you want to make it a hard encounter throw a second assassin bug in there um and then you can maybe kind of go with the whole motif like they had from the Fiend Folio in uh, first edition, where those might be a mated pair um, out to find a host for their young, if you will. Okay, now, where would you place these in a campaign? Um, in CR3, they could be a challenge for low-level parties, and they could serve as like the vanguard or, um, let's say, like the second wave of a some sort of blight that's caused by your big bad. You know, whatever your campaign's um, ultimate uh, power behind. Uh, what am I trying to say? Um, antagonist uh, the ultimate antagonist behind the campaign story um, you know let's say maybe that a blight has descended and the crops are starting to die and the crops are starting to wither and you know maybe there's a drought or something like that that is that is coming on uh, that could be kind of the first the first sign that something is happening but it's kind of generic enough that that could be a natural phenomenon or it could be driven by something else. Well, then maybe assassin bugs start showing up, um, you know, as that blight spreads and they start 
hitting, of course, those outer those outer communities first, causing panic, causing those um, you know frontier lords and uh, barons and dukes to scream out for adventurers. Hey, somebody come and help us! You know we're some something is happening out here. Um, and then, like I said, squeamish players, a great thing to give them. Just a great thing to give them. You know, it's like, gross out your players. Uh, that, you know, by describing, you know, maybe they come across uh, somebody who is a recent victim. Um, and as they get there, you know, they start to see this corpse. But then they start to see that, you know, little places on the corpse are starting to to move and it's like well is it undead no it's like the skin is sort of rippling and then these larval maggots you know burst out through the skin and whatnot you know just just give your give your um give your party that pleasure of um having that and then of course let them go and destroy the hell out of the out of the assassin bug larvae uh, all right, now how could you reskin the assassin bug and make it something, you know, using a similar template but have it be completely different? Now the first two things that came to mind for these were either fiendish or elemental variants. Okay, so imagine uh, some kind of fiendish insectoid creature that lays. Um, that lays demonic larvae in living host that in living hosts that burst out of their victim as tiny demons or devils that harass, destroy, and terrorize other people around the victim. Or perhaps there's some kind of elemental variant um, that you know when when they attack somebody, they begin like. For instance, if there's something from the elemental plane of Earth, you know, they attack somebody and they begin to turn the victim's body to stone from the inside out, you know, like, you know, just sort of instead of instead of, you know, consuming them by eating their flesh, they gradually just turn the thing turn the victim to stone slowly uh, or if there's if they're from the elemental plane of water they gradually liquefy the uh, victim so that you know it just sort of all turns to sort of a goopy mush um, you know fire and air you can do other kinds of things with that like um, maybe maybe if it's something from the elemental plane of air um it starts to produce a gas which makes the victim gradually bloat and bloat and bloat and bloat until it just explodes into like some kind of uh, noxious you know uh, uh, burst of fumes uh you know and you could be even maybe make those fumes poisonous or carry disease or whatever uh, so you know you could have all kinds of fun with doing stuff like that reskinning uh, this monster. All right, uh, let me double check here. Okay, I don't see any questions yet. If you guys do have questions for uh, me in terms of uh, the assassin bug or thoughts on how you might use the assassin bug, let me know. I'm going to go into the uh, close, and then I'll come back and I'll check the uh, chat again. All right. Um, I have been DM Galabond. This has been Monster Monday, and tonight we have been talking about our dear friend, the Assassin Bug. Now, in addition to doing this Monster Monday stream every Monday, I have three other streams that I do every week, and those are actual play games. Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m., I do a planeswalking game called The Walker of Waterdeep. Uh, right now, the party's in Ravnica. Um, and every Tuesday, you can go to my YouTube channel and you'll see a recap of what happened in the week's session in those games. Uh, on Thursday nights, there is a game called the Sword Coast Chronicles. It's sort of our love letter to the published 5e campaigns. We are on a meandering jaunt through the storylines of all of those campaigns, 
because I have created a story of my own that uses, you know, that basically has connective tissue that show how all of these um, events on the Sword Coast that seem to be separate are actually somehow um, organized by or have as their catalyst a single presence or a single entity that is causing all of this chaos to erupt at around the same time in around the same location of the same world. And then on Saturday evenings, uh, there's a really fun game called The Lost Mine of Original D&D. We have taken the Lost Mine of Fan Delver from the basic 5e basic set, and we have, uh, I have rewritten, well, I haven't rewritten it, but I have replaced all of the monsters with their original D&D equivalents. And I have created, uh, I've created pre-generated characters for the players that conform to original D&D rules. And uh, we are playing through that adventure in order to show the players and anybody who decides to watch the game how different the rules are and how changing the rule set can make some parts of that a whole lot more um a whole lot more challenging and some parts of that frankly play out a whole lot more differently because of the rules that they have in there about the interactions with monsters and the way combat goes um it's kind of interesting because it's possible that um the all the monsters can get to go before any of the party because the initiative is for each side instead of for each individual creature uh, and so if the monster party wins the side they get to take all their actions before the pcs can do anything conversely if the pcs win they get to do they get to do all their actions before the monsters can do anything so that's kind of an interesting uh, interesting game then those are of course all on my twitch channel on my YouTube channel, there's archives of everything, uh, including this uh, weekly stream, the live games, and then some short form uh, topical things that I do for every day of the week. So go over to the YouTube and check that out. And then if you love everything that I'm doing on the internet, it would be so awesome. Uh, I do have a Patreon. It'd be so awesome if you could throw a buck or two my way and uh, that would help to uh, cover the cost of things like the Roll20 account, uh, Pro account that I use, uh, maybe help pay for more resources uh, and uh, to make the content a little bit better and you know perhaps uh, allow me to have some people that could help out with some artwork or some uh, you know moderation or things of that nature that uh, would help to make the community grow a little bit more. All right, well, thank you very much for hanging out. I still don't think we have any questions on the chat, so I appreciate those of you who have hung out tonight uh, and watched live. I also always appreciate those of you who watch during the week uh, or watch the archives on YouTube. Thank you very much, everybody, and I will just remind you to watch out for the monsters under the bed, especially the ones that want to lay their eggs in your flesh. Good night, everybody. <laughs>